It's, it's not the Robin in the spring, and it's not the Bradford Pears. It's a bell choir who hasn't been here in an entire year. That's how you know that you're coming into the true spring. So welcome our bell choir. You know, I wanted to play with them. I wanted, I wanted, to, I wanted to play the big bells that Kristen's playing over there, but they, they wouldn't let me on the first practice. 
you know, I picked the big bell up and I hit myself right in the forehead and I cut open a big gash on it and it, you know, it, it felt, you know, it was blood and they had to take him to the hospital and I'm leaving the room because he hey, I don't know who that guy was, but his face sure rings a bell. That was, that was sort of like humor, only it wasn't funny. So, all right, well, moving on here. Here's the counter announcement today. Today, oh, it's 11 a.m. Together, let's take a moment of silence as we remember those on our parish prayer list, those who have died, and those mass intentions for this weekend. At this Mass, we pray for the eternal rest of Monsignor Leo Herbert. Do we have any visitors here today? Any visitors? Raise your hand. There, right there. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> the man sitting right next to her just points. This, this lady. Not me. I'm not a visitor. I'm, I'm here. Welcome. Well, where are you from? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. You have a friend in Pennsylvania, right? That's what they said. Well, welcome. Welcome. Fantastic. Glad to have you here. Anybody else here? All the rest is just family. That's great. Vinny. <laughs> He's a visitor, and I, yet I know his name. How did that work out? I don't have any idea. Besides the bell choir, do we have anyone here that is returning after a period of time? Anyone, maybe you've been at home watching on, online, or maybe you've got your vaccinations and have made it here. Nope, all family and our friend from Pennsylvania. That's awesome. That's awesome. So happy to hear that. Listen, we want you to please keep our question of the week in mind as we listen to God's word in today's readings. In the gospel, we hear that Jesus, seated at the right hand of God, continues to work with the disciples as they preach and do good works. In what ways is the Holy Spirit using my gifts to serve the world? In what ways is the Holy Spirit using my gifts to serve the world? Very intentional question there. So let's think about that as we go into the readings, the sermon today, maybe some of the music. And the beautiful music that Pat's going to sing today. There's a blessing for you here today. You just got to look for it, right? You got to stay awake. You got to look for it. Might be in the readings. Might be in the homily. Might be at the Eucharist. Who knows? It may be when I stop playing the post loop. Oh, thank gosh, that guy stopped. Right? You don't know. But look for that. If you don't receive a blessing today, they are guaranteed. See Father after the Mass, and he will give you your own personal blessing. So there are no strangers here. Will everyone please stand and turn to the person next to you and say... You look fantastic.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This Mass is going to be offered for Monsignor Leo Herbert. And again, my name is Father Roberto, and again, I would like to welcome all newcomers and visitors, and anybody who is living the Holy Eucharist online. We thank you for being here or watching us online. On this day, when we celebrate the joy of the ascension of the Lord, we remember the call to receive the water of baptism. Let us, uh, le uh, let us bless the Lord for the gift of the water. <clears throat> Lord God Almighty, listen to the prayers of your people. We celebrate our creation and redemption. Hear our prayer and bless this water which gives uh, fruit, fruitfulness to the field uh, and refreshment and cleansing of the new people. You chose water to show us your goodness uh, when you lead your people to freedom through the Red Sea and satisfy their thirst in the desert uh, with water from the rock. Water was a symbol used by the prophets uh, to foretell your new covenant with, with us. You made the water of baptism holy by Christ's baptism in the Jordan. By it, you give us new birth and renew us in holiness. May this water remind us, remind us of our baptism and let us share in the joy of all uh, who were baptized at Easter we ask this to Christ our Lord.
Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins. And through the celebration of this Holy Eucharist, make us worthy to share in the table of his kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. whose Son today ascended uh, to the heavens as the apostles uh, look on. Grant, we pray, that in accordance with his promise, we may be worthy uh, for him to lead with us always on earth and, and, and we with him in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theopolis, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men, dressed in white garments, stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, 
Why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to persevere the unity, preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, He ascended on high and took prisoners captive. He gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers 
to equip the holy ones of the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God to mature to manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirm the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everybody. About 10 days ago, I had the opportunity to visit with friends really great friends, and my godson in New Jersey. Uh, I hadn't seen them since the summer of 2019 because of the pandemic. Of course, last year we had plans to get together, but just like everything else, that got changed. I was up in New, New, New Jersey because uh, another good friend had a daughter who was receiving her first communion. So I went to serve at that mass, and I took the opportunity to visit my mom and my family in New York. And on my drive back, my friends invited me to stop by their house. So I went there on a weekday afternoon, and I arrived right in the middle of virtual schooling while mom and dad were trying to work from home. Now they were doing everything so, so well. It was really extraordinary to watch, but the truth is it took a lot of energy, focus, and concentration for them to be able to do everything well. It made me appreciate even more how, what so many of you have been doing over the past year. But it was so nice just to visit with them, to see their faces, to give them a hug, to give my godson a kiss, to be able to just sit and have a cup of tea and have a conversation, to participate in something that just seemed so normal. But one of the things that came up in conversation was that they were trying to teach their son to ride his bike. He's, he just turned eight. So they were trying to teach him to ride his bike. But while they were talking about it, I could, I could hear just the slightest tinge of anxiety in their voices. Now this was the normal, healthy parental anxiety when 
when your child is on the verge of reaching a milestone, but you have a little fear because, well, especially when they're learning to ride a bike, the closer they get, the more they can fall because they have to take the chance to learn to ride the bike. And as parents, we try to teach them everything we know. We try to mitigate what could possibly go wrong. But we also know that they actually have to take the risk. They have to take the risk. And in those moments, we hold our breath. You know, so many graduations are happening at this time, too. And you think about the kids who are taking their risk, moving on to college, moving on to their first job and how we hold our breath and we pray for their success. Well, when I got home the next day, my friend posted a video of his son and his first successful bike ride. And you could hear in their voices, you could see in their faces, you could see their glee, their joy, their pride. And the best part was just looking at my godson's face and just seeing how happy he was in that moment. So as I was thinking about the readings for the Feast of the Ascension, I was thinking about the notion that St. Paul talks about in the letter to the Ephesians, that Jesus descended so that we could ascend. And I was thinking about how parents do this every single day. Parents have a great wisdom, knowledge, ability, but they descend to the cognitive and physical developmental stage of their children all the time to help them where they are, to meet them, to journey with them and to facilitate their success where they are. It's interesting, as all parents know, we've taught them to, to talk, to crawl, to walk, to ride a bike. We've taught them to play silly games at different stages of life, to play different sports, to read, to write, to learn, to think, to process information. We teach them to pray, and we teach them about our faith. We teach them to love so that eventually, someday they can leave us and form a healthy family of their own. Parents have this incredible ability to descend where the children are, to help them ascend, to facilitate their success. But at so many of those milestones, we hold our breath. We hold our breath because we know that failure is a possibility, but we so want them to succeed. I think when you think about the ascension, and you think about God descending to us, in many ways, that idea of that parental role descending to us and helping us is all you need to know about the ascension. God sent us his only son, allowed him to descend to us to facilitate our success, to lift us up to allow us to know who Jesus is, what his ministry was, the sacrifice that he was going to offer, all for the sheer possibility that we would learn to live as he lived, to love as he loved, that we might be able to see the Father through the Son, and that we would fall in love and be lifted up. All God wants is to experience that parental glee, that glee of watching us succeed, that glee of watching us fall in love with him. Jesus descended so that we could ascend into that eternal love. Now here's the spoiler to the end of the story. You don't have to wait to enter into that eternal love. Just as Jesus walked on this earth and lived in that eternal <laughs> infinite love of God, so can we at any point in our lives. You can choose to do it at 8 or 88. It's your choice. We get to live in that right here and right now through our prayer, through our beautiful music, through the Eucharist, through each other. St. Paul tells us in the letter to the Ephesians, that there are billions and billions of gifts that make up the body of Christ. Gifts given not just for our children, but for each other. <coughs> we descend into each other's lives all the time as co-workers, 
mentors, friends, spouses, acquaintances that just meet each other in the journey of life. Gifts given to help lift each other up. So to paraphrase the Acts of the Apostles, people of Galilee, why do you sit there looking up at the sky? Just receive the gift of eternal love that's been given to you so that you can be the gift to everyone that you encounter. Please stand and let us say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Creator of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is born of the Son of the Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, His Son, the Apostles' Father, He is the Son of the Spirit, and the Son of the Head. And the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and he stood at the right hand of the Father of Mighty. For in heaven he was unchanged and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic the Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the Lord of Amen. And now let us turn now to God with our needs and the needs of our neighbors uh, all around the world. For the people of God, for the grace to listen with love and speak with kindness, for the courage to spread the gospel in word and deed, we pray. May our lives proclaim your love, O God. May our lives proclaim your love, O God for peace in the Middle East and around the world, for children growing up in the midst of violence and children who live in fear, we pray. May our lives proclaim your love, O God, for an end to human trafficking, for efforts to protect the unborn and for women in crisis pregnancies, for those who have been released from prison, and trying to build a new life, we pray. May our lives proclaim your love, O God. For those who struggle to pay for necessary medical procedures and medications, for all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, for those taken from our sight by death, we pray. May our lives proclaim your love, O God. Lord God of heaven and earth, you crowd Jesus' early mission by giving him a place of your right hand at his body on earth. May we remain in him always, that we may proclaim the good news to the world by the way in which we love one another through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, whose only begotten Son, our High Priest, is seated, ever living, at your right hand to intercede for us, grant that we may approach with confidence to the throne of grace, and there obtain your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for uh, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conquer our sin and death, ascended today uh, to the highest of heaven, as the angels gaze in wonder, mediator between God and men, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended uh, to the distant himself from our lowly state, but uh, that we, his members, uh, might be confident in following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things uh, and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, 
by the same Spirit graciously made holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the seven passion of your Son, his wonder, resurrection, and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we may nourish by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas Aquinas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Gregory Chan, our Archbishop, and the auxiliary bishops, the other bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion. O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with the men in hand, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and all rejoice forever and ever. from by divine teaching, whether to say, Our Father, 
or heaven. Hallowed thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our holy bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, for it shall live in peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins from the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with the will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, Amen. and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have to share the of my word, but also the word of my
Let us pray. May the gift we have received from your altar, O Lord, kindle in our hearts a longing for the heavenly homeland and cause us to press forward following the Savior's footsteps to the place where, for our sake, he entered before us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. St. Thomas is offering a drive through vaccine for COVID-19 next Saturday, May 22nd, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The vaccine is being administered by Pickens Urgent and Primary Care, and our parish volunteers will guide you as you remain in your car from start to finish. The vaccine is free, but you must pre-register by going to our website, www.sta.org. Our summer concert series is back this summer. Our first concert is next Friday, May 21st, under the tents with the Atlanta Blue Notes. Please see this weekend's bulletin for more details. Many are wondering what faith formation will look like. Rest assured that we are working diligently and thoughtfully to ensure what we offer to STA families is a great program. Registration and full program details will be made available the first week of June. We appreciate everyone's patience. And our question of the week. In the gospel, we hear, Jesus seated, we hear that Jesus, seated at the right hand of God, continues to work with the disciples as they preach and do good works. Our question is this. In what ways is the Holy Spirit using my gifts to serve the world? In what ways is the Holy Spirit using my gifts to serve the world? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. A difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Go make a difference, we can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. We are the salt of the earth, called to let the people see. Yeah.